So, so I got asked uh, recently, somebody's like, well, man, you know, what do you do for fun? Do you have friends? <laughs> you know, like, you, you know, whatever. And, and um, you know, I, I, I was sitting there. I'm like looking at this. I'm like, dude, okay. If I were, you know, I, I don't know, a professional athlete. I don't watch sports, so I won't even name drop because I couldn't even tell you who the hell plays and what. Um, but if I were a professional athlete, and I was out there grinding seven days a week, 18 hours a day, perfecting my craft, nobody would be giving me shit. Everybody would be like, oh, he's out there living out his dreams. However, we get in the, the corporate world, and even though we're chasing our dreams, like I feel like a professional athlete, right? I mean, I absolutely do. I, I, get, a, I get paid a big chunk of money um, to do what I love to do every single damn day of my life. So I feel like a professional athlete. However, I will get criticized. You will get criticized because you're not the professional athlete, right? If you were a professional athlete, they'd be like, oh, they're just out there chasing their dreams. So what happens with all of this is, number one, you have to choose to level up and commit. If you're looking for relaxation, if you're looking for days off, if you're striving for vacations, whatever, I'm not saying that's a bad thing, you know, but you're probably not going to be able to level up and become one of the greats in the business world if that's something that's important to you. And there's only two choices in life, and this is from Jim Rohn. You know, you get a, it's, it's, it's the pain of discipline or the pain of regret. Pain of discipline weighs ounces, pain of regret weighs tons. So you got to pick and choose what you're going to roll with. What does that look like for you in the morning, dude? What do you do intentionally, um, you know, to kind of set yourself up? Yeah, that? so to me, 4.30, 5 o'clock, I'm up and at it, and uh, usually I'm getting a big glass of water, getting myself going, kind of just walking around the house, turning on some lights, you know, checking on my girls, and then I'm going straight to my knees, man. I am getting on my knees by myself, and the first three things I'm giving thankful for, I'm giving, I'm, usually what I've been into right now is I'm giving thanks for three different things about my wife and my two girls, okay? And then from there, here's where prayer fails for people too. They either turn to prayer when they need it most because they haven't been doing it, they've been neglecting it, and they're in some challenges, so they're hoping God pulls their shit out right now. And, and they're always begging. And when you put forth a begging attitude, you're going to get your answer of, hey, dude, you're a beggar, right? God doesn't help beggars. God helps people that help themselves. So one of the things I've learned is through prayer, I'm never asking for anything. I'm just giving thanks for what I have and yeah. thanks for the idea of even possibilities. You know, like the fact that I this last year to me is huge in understanding leverage of salespeople with inside of my organization. I Before it was always, I got to go get another listing. Now I got to go get another talented person, right? Yep. And just the whole fact that, I'm not necessarily where the plan is take yet, where the plan's taking me, but hey, I'm grateful. I even am recognizing that's where I got to go, right? And so to me, I'm spending the first 15, 20 minutes in prayer, just being thankful to be alive. Praying uh, is when I do ask for things, I'm, I'm doing kind of like prayer power where I'm shooting prayers at people, right? Just like praying for people that I just think could use some juice for the day. After that, I'm rolling into a meditation and uh, just really hanging on to a mantra for about 20 minutes, just being silent and just letting the cobwebs get out of my mind. From there, I'm usually going downstairs, reading a book, journal writing, um, you know, uh, just kind of getting ready, eating some food, showering, getting to the office and crank it up. Crank it up. Yeah. yeah. Then usually I'll get to the office and put some Skrillex on and really take it to a next level with my energy. I mean, that's the thing about your energy too. You can be like, I, I call it uh Digging a dodge, you said, Ina, that's uh, uh, quiet. Uh, I can't even say it in English anymore. I don't even know how to say it. So it's basically just quiet dignity, right? And then you can go into a peak state like that, where it's like you are at level 10 and just everything is just like a diesel motor, just boom, 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 boom. So if you can learn to control your emotion, you can do anything. Yeah. You know, this podcast was created um, to go out there and just inspire uh, not just real estate agents, but entrepreneurs from every field to go out there and, and create an epic life, right? Not just with motivation, inspiration, but also a tactical strategy to go out there and build their businesses um, with that. So with that being said, do you have any last words of maybe motivation, inspiration, or advice that you'd like to leave our listener base with? You know, I mean, you're a guy that's went out there and created you know, many successful businesses, built them, sold them, and, and rebuilt, sold, and, yeah. you know, and, and now you've got one that's a, almost extreme, you know, to you at this point, passive income, and now you're building another uber successful business, you know, so you're a guy that's done it. Right. Um, you're a doer, right? So do you have any last uh, words of advice that you'd like to uh, leave our listener base with? Um, focus on the person you're going to serve, whatever that is, and, and solving their need, not your, putting your uh, uh, presuppositions in there, but uh, really identify what the hurt and what the need is for those people. So if it's a jewelry 
why do they need to buy jewelry from you and, and just really work through what you can give them a value proposition. So if you start from the client and their need first, then build your business, then build your systems to satisfy that. And then it'll keep you in touch with that person as it changes. I mean, our economy changes, uh, technology changes. and But if you're always client focused from their perspective, you'll be in the right spot and won't be a dinosaur. Yep. Couldn't agree more. Powerful words. You know, most of our listeners, I'm in the real estate space. Most of our listeners are real estate agents out there um, with that. And, and we kind of operate in this dinosaur industry where, where oh, yeah. I mean, nobody is really doing anything to disrupt. You know, what would be, so if we're listening to this, like, okay, I, I mean, I get how these people are disrupting the marketplace, but how would I get in there and disrupt my marketplace with my local clients? And what are some maybe thoughts or, or suggestions that you'd have for our listeners there? Sure. So, Nowadays, you have social media as opposed to buying, you know, bus benches and, and magnets and, and mailing and, and email and everything. What can you do different? What content can you create that people will engage with you, get a sense that they know you on a, on a daily basis? OK, so that by the time they make that once every seven year decision, you're top of mind. Most people aren't thinking about their industry and their personal brand. Have you created a personal brand? What do you stand for? How are you known in your community? Uh, and it's so easy to do. Um, uh, a friend of mine that's in real estate here in town got into drones real early on. So he has amazing drone footage of all the properties he listed. But his, his personal brand isn't just, here's another house that I'm selling with an aerial shot. Here's some amazing drone footage I shot this weekend at Joshua Tree or going through a Surfing Girl or whatever. He's built up, you know, an identity. So you really have to think, why you? What are you the best at? You're the best at being you. So what is that you and how do you amplify that? Um, then why not solve some of the other pieces? You now have crowdfunding, you know, capital available. You have the ability for people to syndicate debt. You have all these tools that you can suddenly be a one-stop solution for somebody as opposed to just somebody taking a commission. Um, in the industrial space, it's really what are, what are the changes in technology doing that make property different? So when we were crowdfunding commercial real estate, um, one of the things that was interesting was somebody who was buying up all these failed big box you know, uh, stores. Your your circuit cities and, and, and Best Buy's that close. And you go, you're not going to find another big box tenant. Correct, which is why he's able to get them so cheap. But he partnered with somebody that said, wait, we can convert these into public storage. They already have parking. They already have the infrastructure. You just put some interior walls and boom. And, you know, it's making a killing at it. You know, so look at your industry not from the same eyes of people in it, but from whose problems can you solve that aren't being addressed? And there's room for efficiency everywhere. Yeah, love it. So, you know, a lot of our listeners are millennials and a lot of them have young families, young kids. Um, school system, as you as you talked about earlier, I mean, it's, it's a broken model uh, to prep kids for, for the world we live in today. As parents, how should we be prepping our, our kids? I've got three you know, kids, seven, five, and two. You know, I mean, how, what should we be doing? Because we know the schools aren't prepping them. How should we prep them for the new economy as parents? Well, I, I'm super proud of my two sons, uh, and uh, they hate when I brag, but, you know, both both went to Ivy League schools. One then went on to get the uh, MBA at Harvard. Um, I just tried to, I looked at them as sponges, you know, they didn't have to be what daddy was. They didn't have to do anything, but expose them to as much as possible. So I was one of the biggest makers of video games. I didn't let my kids have a video game system, right? I sold millions of games because, and when they wanted to, to play video games, I said, okay, write your own, learn how to code. You know, both of them went into entertainment jobs, but they both learned engineering to solve a problem. They wanted to, to play on the computer and do stuff. And once you create something, sitting there going twitch, 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 is really boring, right? right? Um, you know, I tried to expose them to, you know, anything and everything. You know, uh, they've been to all 50 states. I mean, just see what sticks and you'll see real quickly. Um, and I also tried to expose them to things that I have zero interest in and, Try to fake, like, uh, oh, you know, here. Uh, and I volunteered to be the coach and this or that. But 
it's just reinforcing kids have such a desire and thirst to learn, you know, answer every why. And, you know, why, why, why? And if you don't have the answer, then go to the library together to figure it out and do it, you know, reward that creativity. And, you know, that's, that's about all that I could say. Kids are made perfect. We screw them up. There's only two things you need for success. Insight and drive. Everything else can be hired. So I just sit there once again, you know, as I've done time and time again, what's the next wacky idea? And, uh, you know, we had no idea that some of these things would become the giant companies that use every day. We had no idea. Um, but it's kind of fun that they have, and it's kind of fun that we're now that much interconnected. And, it, and the ramp to success is much, much quicker. Because if you can prove on, in your city, in your town, in your little hamlet that your business can scale, there's unlimited capital for you to scale it. And so that's why you see the smallest things, you know, topple the Sonys and the Kodaks and the Polaroids overnight because we're all connected. So we all hear about it very, very quickly. You know, GoPro goes from zero to hero and then can go back down again if somebody else comes up with the next thing. So, yeah, I hope I don't have to go through that again. Um, but it's fun when you do it. Be the best at what you do or the only one doing it. Because if you're the only one doing it, by definition, you're the best. I mean, it's really, how do you stand out from the six billion? And the second you start realizing it's not doing what everybody else does, nobody led a company or a nation by following the path of somebody else, right? You know, get over that fear, get over that, I'm not smart enough, I'm afraid, I don't have the connections, I don't have the money, okay, blah, 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 blah. Too many entrepreneurs are better manufacturing excuses than products. Get out there and try. And you will fall down and you will stand up. And you will fall down and you'll stand up and you'll fall down soon. And one day you'll realize that you're standing on the top of a mountain and you got there by falling down all the way up the mountain. And, and that's, that's all it takes. And, and if I had the time, I mean, I'd tell you the countless people who were this close to giving up or the, the board was this close to just pulling the plug and, and you know, and they just went that extra day. I mean, and wow, you know, we're glad they did. And, and that's also for artists as well. I mean, so many of the biggest names, their first albums absolutely tanked, right? But it was part of the learning process, you know? You know, Decca wouldn't sign the Beatles, you know? IBM thought the computer was a stupid idea. I mean, these things go on and on. They laughed at Alexander Graham Bell that the phone wouldn't go, you know? No one's going to go, wow, that is brilliant. You know, you are flawless. Like people were worried somebody's going to steal your idea. Really? You can advertise your idea on the side of a billboard. Ideas are out there. It's the hard work that it takes to turn an idea and build something. And we tend to forget that. And we tend to think that it's just some, some magic that somebody just, whoa, this company just went public for a billion dollars. Uh, I had that same idea. Great. They worked at it. You know, so... Get out there and do it and employ a bunch of people. I mean, all the jobs since 2008 weren't created by big corporations, all from startups. So the strength of our country is based on the back of an entrepreneur saying, yes, I can.